Good afternoon from upstate New York and good morning to you who are in Las Vegas. We've got a minute before noon and uh, give everybody an opportunity to get on board to get mm -hmm. the notification that Good Samaritan Lutheran Church is now live for the good news at noon. I'm Pastor Jim Slater, and I'll be sharing with you my Thursday stories of the good news from Fox Hill. Now, let me uh, give you a little bit of a uh, warning. It is a rainy thunderstorm day here in upstate New York, and so I was not able to use my broadcast booth of our neighbor's trailer and their DSL connection so I'm home and using my own hotspot, and on a day like today, one can never trust the internet connections. So I'm just giving you a fair warning that we may experience some problems, but uh, you know we've had some good success lately. Last Thursday worked out really well, and so I'm hoping that things will go well for us today also. It's rainy here. Of course, it's not as bad as it is for the people who are experiencing Hurricane Laura in Louisiana and eastern Texas. Uh, we have friends that live down there, and uh, our concern and our prayers are for their safety because it sounds like there's been a massive amount of destruction caused by the hurricane. Uh, so keep those people in your prayers, and also the people who work to uh, provide rescue mm -hmm. and restoration for them. But uh, given the weather here, we'll uh, keep on going and uh, hope things work out. Uh, I cannot see who's getting on board, so I'm not able to greet anybody. Oh, wait, oh, Carol Fink says she cannot hear. Hmm... Let me see, is that any better, Carol? Um, I hope that makes a difference to be able to hear me. Um, okay, just let me know if, if that's any better for the, uh, for the listening to what I'm saying. Uh, Mandy, I can see that you are on board. Good morning, and uh, glad to have you with us. Um, I'll, I'll get started because... Uh, uh, Carol Fink is watching. Yes, okay, we see that, Carol. I hope you are able to hear me. So, uh, um, I think you're saying you can. That, that would be great. Uh, for the story for today, there are uh, at three Bible passages that are all foundational to this story. Uh, they're not real long, but I do want to share them with you so that you are able to uh, get some idea of uh, what my thought process was as I was uh, working on the story and how it related to these three lessons. So our first lesson that I want to share with you is from the Old Testament book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 15. The uh, Israelites have been led by Joshua across the Jordan River and into the promised land. And so now uh, this is Joshua speaking to the people. 24, 14 through 15. Joshua said to the people of Israel, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the god of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The second reading is a New Testament epistle. It's really more like a, a treatise to the Ephesians. In chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. The Apostle writes to the church in Ephesus, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers mm -hmm. of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And then a gospel lesson that today's story is based on is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, verses 66 through 69. The disciples, along with Jesus, have just witnessed Jesus' miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And that has resulted in Jesus explaining to them what the bread that they, they received was all about and how it represented not bread for the body, but bread for the soul, the bread of life, Jesus himself. Jesus says to his disciples, Because of this, many of the disciples of Jesus turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. So with those three Bible passages as background and foundation, let me share with you a story that is entitled, Time to Come Home. So it is true that faith really matters out there in Fox Hill, Wisconsin, my hometown. You'd think that as summer reaches its peak in central Wisconsin, and all the camps and cabins around Lake Madsen were full, that the town itself would be hustling and bustling. But it just isn't so. As soon as school closes for summer vacation in May, folks from Madison, from Milwaukee, and Kenosha flock to Fox Hill. The streets are full, the stores are crowded as provisions are brought to stock the newly opened camp for another season. But now, as another school year looms just around the corner, full of many questions and concerns, the lake camps are being shut down and the city folk are preparing to flock back home. Every once in a while, a pickup truck will drive into town to pick up sheets of plywood at the Bigger Hammer Hardware Store. Well, you've heard their motto on radio commercials from WCCO, the call of the loon, out of Green Bay. If at first you don't succeed, try a bigger hammer. And if you can't find it at Bigger Hammer Hardware in Fox Hill, you really didn't need it, now did ya? The plywood, nails, and hammers are for boarding up the camps against the possibility of another severe Fox Hill winter. It's the same with the locals. They're all out at their camps too, closing down for the summer and the return back home to town. So it's been really quiet out there in Fox Hill. Don and Wendy Lundberg have a camp out by the point. They were thinking about coming into town for church last Sunday, but then they noticed that the Gonzalez family, from one of the dales outside of St. Paul, Minnesota, you know, Oakdale or Ferndale or Bloomingdale or Riverdale or Chippendale, they, could, they couldn't remember which one. The Gonzalez family, who just this year bought the camp next to them, were putting up the plywood on the inside of their windows. Well, I guess they were kind of new to camp life and Wisconsin winters. Don tried to be real patient as he explained that 
the wind blows from the outside, don't you know, not from the inside. He told them to look at all the pictures on the news from Louisiana as people prepared for Hurricane Laura and nailed the plywood to the outside of their windows and doors. So while working with the Gonzalez family, they missed church. They were actually kind of curious to see what church was like in August, even for reasons other than all the COVID-19 precautions. Because long before many people can remember, Dudley Keel, council president at Fox Hill Lutheran Church for many, many years, had convinced the rest of the council that, since no one attends worship in August anyway, they should just board up the windows and lock the doors for the month and save on expenses by having the minister take his four-week vacation then. That had started even before David Martin had been pastor there, and that had been for 35 years. Pastor Martin never challenged the idea. His own children had imagined that Jesus himself went on vacation during the month of August. They thought that was why nothing exciting in the life of Jesus, you know, his birth or his death or his resurrection, nothing like that happens in the summertime. But now Pastor Martin had gone into a kind of semi-retirement, and Vicar Lena, a young female student intern from New Jersey, had taken over the pulpit of Fox Hill Lutheran. She could not believe that a church would close down for a whole month and force her to take all four weeks of her vacation at that time. So that was the first change that she made upon her arrival. She had argued that the Summer Lake people would want to come to church in August, but, of course, that never happened. So the loyal remnant came, the Nelsons and the Andersons, but that was about all. Long-established habits are hard to change, even for the better. As it happened, Vicar Lena did want one week off in August, in order to go back home to New Jersey and visit her family, which she did. She went to church with her parents that Sunday and was kind of caught by surprise when they sang Onward Christian Soldiers as the hymn of the day. Why, she hadn't sung that hymn in years. It was considered far too militaristic an image among her Uppsala College and Philadelphia Lutheran Seminary communities. But as she sang the hymn, memories came flooding into her mind of being one of the Sunday school children herself, dressed in imaginary suits of armor, marching around the classroom, led by her own mother, who was her Sunday school teacher. I don't think children experience that anymore, she pondered, marching with the assurance that Jesus has conquered all the world's evils and we can feel protected from sin and the devil by wearing the armor of God. At such a time as this coronavirus pandemic, was that really all so bad? What confidence of faith do children have today with life seeming so much more complicated than it was then. But it wasn't just the old hymn. The gospel lesson for the day spoke about Jesus teaching the people at the synagogue in Capernaum. Well, she had been there. She remembered standing there with her parents on a trip to the Holy Land they took together. They stood in the ruins of that Kafranahum Synagogue, mm -hmm. now nothing but a relic. But to her, it was as if, after all those years, she could feel the presence of Jesus even in the ruins of that holy place. And now, sitting next to her mother and her father at worship after all these years, she could still feel the Spirit of God moving in her soul. 
since hardly anybody would be at worship at Fox Hill Lutheran anyway, Vicar Lena had asked Pastor Martin to fill in for her. Maybe she thought some of the old-timers would come out and welcome him back. But there weren't many in the pews to hear Pastor Martin preach on the Joshua text for the day. It was a text he had never preached on before, since he had always been on vacation during the month of August. So he called their attention to a quilt hanging on the church wall. Many years ago, all the families of the church were encouraged to submit a square of material that would represent their family to be woven together into one big quilt. Pastor Martin had created a square with a picture of a church and its steeple surrounded by the names David, his wife Judy, and the two kids. And then on the bottom he wrote Joshua 24, 15, which if you looked it up, it would read, As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. He rambled on about how he wished he and Judy would have had nine sons who would all become pastors, and then they could form a barnstorming clergy baseball team to play during the month of August, when there was no church anyway. And they would establish a Lutheran dynasty equal to the Bowmans or the Wangerans or the Martys. But that never happened. It was hard being PKs, preacher's kids for his own children, and having to sit in the front pew of the church with their mother while dad preached against the evils of the world from above their heads, sometimes feeling the spray of his spit if he got really worked up about something. That was back in the days before spit guards to prevent infection. Now both his kids are grown up and doing well with families of their own, but they hardly ever attend church. At best, they are C and E Christians and Easter Christians. He wondered if that's how Jesus felt when he preached at the synagogue in what Pastor Martin pronounced as Capernaum, Jesus' first real effort at outreach, feeding over 5,000 hungry people, had resulted in everybody turning away from him. Jesus, in teaching about eating his body and drinking his blood for everlasting life, had been an evangelism failure. Go figure. People wanted and believed that they deserved food to fill their bellies, while Jesus was offering undeserved grace to feed their souls. Then Pastor Martin grew very serious. He said that the trouble with people today is that so many believe that what they have is what they deserve, what they have worked hard for, and don't acknowledge or appreciate that we live in community and that we depend on one another. That was in the heart of those lost German explorers who settled Fox Hill and established this church in that same pioneer spirit. But now, everybody does their own thing, and that does nothing but reduce a community of thousands to one. Me, myself, and I. If we have learned anything from the pandemic, it is that we all need each other. If we don't have compassion and concern for one another, then we are doomed. That's why so many churches today have to have plywood nailed over the outside of their stained glass windows because there's no spirit left blowing on the inside. When the disciples of Jesus were confronted with such decline, they realized that they, alone and left to their own devices, could do nothing to change the trend. It is Peter who finally realizes when Jesus asks if they also want to leave him, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
you alone have the words of eternal life. That was not what they deserved or worked hard to earn, but that was what Jesus had to offer for free for all who trusted in him, eternal life. The danger, preached David in a power he had never before displayed, is not to the church. The church belongs to God and will always be what God wants it to be. No, the danger is to each one of us that we become lonely, isolated, and self-serving. The church will exist wherever the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed. The church will exist wherever the praises of the Lord are spoken and, yes, even sung. The church will exist wherever those in need are served as Christ would serve them. Within the community of God's church, you will find meaning and purpose. Within the community of God's church, you will find your hope and your future. Within the community of God's church, you will find the Spirit of Jesus alive and working among his people. He was starting to spray a little bit now. Within the community of God's church, you will find your home. Then he sat down and thought to himself, Whoa! Where did that come from? And he wished that Lyle Bartlett would have been awake for it, and that more would have been there to hear it. Yesterday, Vicar Lena flew from Newark, New Jersey, to Milwaukee, and then drove her car north to Fox Hill. The traffic heading south from the lakes of Wisconsin was bumper to bumper. All the summer folk were heading home and she was going in the opposite direction. No, she thought, that's not really true. Although I'm returning from visiting my family in New Jersey, I'm also on my way home, home to Fox Hill. She pulled up to her home, and as she began unpacking her car, Wendy Lundberg and her three girls walked by. Hey, Vicar Lena, she greeted. Welcome home. How was your trip? Hey, with the coronavirus, will Sunday school be starting again? And do you know when? Vicar Lena replied, September 13, first Sunday after Labor Day weekend. That will be our rally day. Good, we'll be there, said Wendy. We're back home from camp now. Yes, thought Vicar Lena. Someday we'll all be back home. Then she started thinking about Rally Day. Maybe she'll have all the Sunday school children create armor and shields out of construction paper and march around the church singing, Onward Christian Soldiers, to slay the enemy of COVID-19. I bet you that would fill the church with a powerfully blowing spirit in this crazy year. That's something they would never forget. And that's the good news from Fox Hill, where faith really matters for every single man, woman, and child. Oh, and the married ones, too. Amen. Thank you for being with me today and for listening to that story. Let's enter into a time of prayer together and, uh, and especially remember in our prayers those who are suffering today, either from uh, illness or from uh, natural disaster or from difficult decisions that they have to face. Join me in prayer. Lord our God, we thank you for giving us a home base in our faith and for helping us to know that it is through the gifts of love and forgiveness and mercy that Jesus offers to us that we can meet any challenge that is ahead, that we can deal with any distressing situation, that we can offer our help and assistance to those in need who are experiencing the destruction and the turmoil that is caused by Hurricane Laura. And we pray that all may be find safety, that they may be able to uh, restore their homes and their lives and to be able to uh, get their life back in order after everything that has happened. And we pray that 
there will be those who will offer their help for them to be able to make new changes and to restore everything for them. So also in this time of pandemic, we pray for those who are experiencing health concerns or experiencing the illness of loved ones and even the death of loved ones. We pray that your blessings may be upon them. I have people of my acquaintance, Lord, who are facing end-of-life situations, and I pray especially for them. I pray for my friend, Charlie. I pray for my sister-in-law's mother, Dorothy. And I pray for one who had once been an intern of mine, Kathy, that they may all know that as they go through their difficult times, they are not alone, but you are there by their side to comfort them, to guide them, and to promise them a promised land beyond the river of death. Lord, also, I'm sure many of us have those that we wish to lift up in prayer, and so we'll offer time now in silence for people to do that. We thank you, Lord, that you give us this wonderful gift of prayer to be able to share all of our thoughts and concerns, our joys and celebrations with you, knowing that you care for each one of us and that you will answer according to your good will. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. And together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Be well. Stay safe. Uh, I know that Good News at Noon will be on again tomorrow, and I will see you all again next week. God's blessings. Bye.